all the time. And all the time, God is good. What an excellent song to lead us into the book of Job. Because we are so spoiled. My God. Mm. Today we want to talk about from Job chapter 1. In case of a spiritual emergency. Dot, dot, dot. What are you going to do? Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you. You alone are worthy of all the praise. Bless us, God, as we dig into thy word, that we might find the truths and apply them to our lives and share them with our brothers and sisters along the journey, that their lives may be increased and encouraged. In Jesus' name, amen. In case of a spiritual emergency, what you going to do? We need to consider that because... Everybody else seems to have an emergency plan. They they told they tell us that our families need to have an emergency evacuation plan. That in case something happens, you need to know how to get out of your safe house, your locked up house, your house with all those doggone alarms. You need to know how to get out <laughs> in case of an emergency. In businesses and schools and buildings and the recent shootings, how do you get out in an emergency? What do you do? If you can't get out, where do you go and where do you hide and what do you get under? What do you, what room do you go into? Or uh, years ago when I was in school, they had fallout shelters. The, the black and yellow signs would show you where to go in school. Uh, it was very scary down there where they wanted us to go. Um, all the bathrooms were down there near the boiler rooms. And it was strange because when you went by yourself, you heard all kinds of noises down there. And they had already told the stories about the green lady and the green man. <laughs> almost almost make you go to the bathroom on yourself. I might as well say it because you try to look for the green lady. And the green man. And really, when you went down there by yourself, you thought you heard some green noises. And um, you really didn't want to go by yourself. But nobody in the class wanted to go with you because they were scared too. So you had two scared people. But they had, they, they used to make us go through fire drills. All kinds of stuff. In case of an emergency. So today we want to talk about in case of a spiritual emergency. Because a lot of times... We will say God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. And, you know, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. And we say these things, we shout these things, we praise God, but I don't know, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes it's hard for the praise Sometimes it's hard to shout hallelujah when, when, when stuff ain't right, when, when I can't pay my bills, when, when I put my hand in my pocket and I find lint. I ain't talking about lint in season, I'm talking about L-I-N-T. And uh, no money. It's, it's, it's deep sometimes because I know he's worthy of the praise, but sometimes I wonder, will the... Will the praise ever come? I don't mind it being late, but because of what I'm going through, will the praise ever come? In case of a spiritual emergency. And I need to let you know that from the book of Job, we begin to understand that spiritual warfare is real. That the enemy is real. Revelation says he goes back to and fro trying to accuse the sisters and the brothers all day long. That's all he does. That's why God said, uh, Satan, what you doing? I'm going back and forth in the earth trying to mess up somebody, trying to start some trouble, trying to wreak some havoc because I can't beat you. You know how it was when you established yourself when the sister and brother knew they couldn't beat you. They start messing with other folk that you like or your, or your sibling. So, so Satan said, since I can't beat you, I'm going to mess with your children. But never forget the permissive will of God. 
Because when we sing the song, he's got the whole world in his hand, and God has everything under control and in control, you've got to begin to believe that because it's the permissive will of God. You find out in Job that if, if God didn't allow Job to do what he did, Job, uh, Satan would I mean, Satan to do what he did, Satan would have done anything to Job. And God gives him limits. And God gives him boundaries. But you and I got to understand the cost of picking up the cross. Amen. 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 We got to learn how to shout in season and out of season. We understand he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. When I'm catching you know what, he's still God. And when I got everything I need, he's still God. When I'm in between stuff, he's still God. When I'm in between a rock and a hard place, he's still God. But will I praise him? Will I serve him? Will I honor him? Will I lift him up? Will I magnify? Or do they have to pump and prime me this Sunday because of what happened the, the previous week? Am I mad with God? Am I upset with God? God, that ain't fair. I go to church all the time. I do the best I can. And, and you let this stuff happen in my life. How about Miss So and So down the street with them bad kids and 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 that no good husband and oh we <laughs> and God is trying to explain to you and I like Job you could be like Job and you still could be under consideration you could be under consideration and under consideration doesn't mean that you did anything wrong you've been you may have been just like Joe, haven't done anything wrong. But here it comes. Yeah, they had a week or a month like that, a year like that. This happened, and that happened, and that happened. And see, like the more you came to church, still somebody, something else happened. And you just wonder where was God, and God is still God. And you begin to understand that he kept you and kept me in the midst of all the mess that we were going through, that if he had, if he wasn't in our lives, that which happened would overwhelm us and would have overtaken us. I don't know, before, before I got my years in, understand how God operates, I used to be kind of slow in that praise. I don't like praising God with no money in my pocket. See, y'all, y'all don't want to talk to me today because, because y'all saints and I'm in the wrong church today. Take the halos off for a minute. Take the halos off for a minute. Come on now. So I just had an argument and been through something. That, and they, they sing. They, they, the praise team is singing. They getting it in. Now I'm looking at them like they're crazy. Come on now. I, I've seen it. You know what happens. And you ain't feeling it this Sunday. You ain't feeling it. Because things ain't going right. Even if I did get myself in trouble, God is still greater than my trouble. Where are you at? I've been faithful, God. See, we have to be careful about serving God, thinking that God owes us something. I said, God, what is it with you? He said, when you think about it, your eternal life was what I sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Oh, my God. Everything else is frosting on the cake. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And I, I'm there with all the Bibles. But what I sealed for you with the Holy Spirit was your eternal life. You got that no matter what. And for some of us, that's just not good enough. Especially when you're going through. It, it's like somebody left you all this money, but you're not 18 yet. <laughs> I can't get to it. Oh, I got eternal life, but I don't really need to use it yet. What can I use? So, in case of an emergency, what are we going to do? As we look at Job chapter 1, I wanted to consider, number one, Job's reputation. Job had a reputation. Number two, Job's accumulation. Wealthy man. And number three, Job's situation and determination. Number one, Job's reputation. Number two, Job's accumulation. And number three, Job's situation and determination. For all three of those points, his reputation came from God, his wealth accumulation came from God, and his situation and determination came from God. 
My, everything that we're going to talk about is because of God in Job's life. Look at Job's reputation. Look at, look at Job 1 and 1. There was a man in the land of us. It, it starts out like far, far ago, many years ago. There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. And that man was what? Perfect, as moral as a man could be. I don't want nobody taking me back to Genesis and talking about we all sin and come short of the glory. He was as moral as a person and upright, and he reverenced and feared God, and he excused or he shunned evil. I'm talking about Job's reputation. Job had a wonderful, you know, like clean reputation. It says that he, uh, in verse 3, at the end, he was the greatest of all the men of the East. Lord, have mercy. To me, when I read that, I said, if Job is perfect and upright and feared God and eschewed evil and shunned evil, and he was the greatest men of all the East, then he should not be the one that Satan be allowed to mess with. But God wants to show you and I today, after all that, you may still be under consideration. Wow. Uh, he was the greatest man of all the East. He was perfect and upright. And, and he had a great household. We're going to talk about his accumulation now. He had seven sons and three daughters. Now, some people today might, look, might, might not look at that as a blessing. <laughs> he had all them chilling. <laughs> but you need to understand, especially during biblical times, you need some sons. Just for inheritance and everything, just because of, of how how women were treated and what they could and could not inherit. You needed some sons. But he had ten kids. And I think about that. My mother finally had ten kids. And and neither one of them are here anymore. And uh, we ran them. No. But um, that's a lot of kids. Some of us come from big families. Seven sons, three daughters. See, and you know, people don't look at that as wealthy, but during biblical times, if you had a lot of children, especially sons, you were considered wealthy. What else did he have? He, his substance. Oh my, he had the bling bling during that. Look, look, look what he had. He had 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of ox. Wait a minute, yoke? That takes two and a yoke. Is that a thousand? Am I wrong? Or is it with two fifty? What am I saying here? Come on. He had five hundred yoke of oxen and five hundred female donkeys in a very great household. He had servants and everything. Oh, he had it going on. When you went to Job's house, Lord, my wife just showed me some of. The, she's just talking about some of the houses that some of the sports players, basketball players, had, like before and after. You should see that stuff. Oh, my God. They, 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 they made Job look like it. But he had all this substance. He accumulated all this wealth, but all this wealth came from God. The fact that Job could be perfect and upright and fear God and the greatest man of all, all that came from God. Everything that you and I have comes from God. And that's where we struggle. Because we think we own it. And we use it. But really, it comes from God. Job told Mrs. Job, should we accept all good and nothing bad? I'm not saying that we need to leave here saying, let the evil come. I want us to spiritually understand that stuff jumps off in the spiritual realm. There's a spiritual warfare going on. And sometimes you and I can be under consideration by God for Satan. Mm. That's not to make you run away from the church or run away from God, because we do have the victory. But there's nothing wrong with understanding what you signed up for. Amen. Anybody married and, and after five years want to know what they signed up for? <laughs> Amen. The, most, the more stuff you can know up front, the better. That's why you have an engagement period. Wait and see. See how they act when the earthquake comes? See how they act when the tornado comes. See how they act when, see if they protect you or run and leave you by the good of Lord Jesus. What am I saying on the day? In case of an emergency, a spiritual emergency, what's your plan? So Job had this reputation, he had accumulation, but let's look at his situation and his determination. What I like about Job, Job 
and his sons and daughters, but they they was like young adults, man. They was kicking it. Like it said that every time one of them had a birthday, oh, they called their sisters, dim the lights, called the DJ up in the house, and they get to kicking it. You know, they were partying, and 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 they said the party would last two, three, four, five days. They they were getting it in, and and, and Job knew. That there was the money that he gave them, you know, for church. You know, he gave them money to put in church. And they took the money. The scripture don't say that. This is me. They took the money. (laughs) And he was saying that, and and Job was so spiritual, he ain't stopped the party. He said, no, they got to live their life. Because I, I couldn't find out, I was trying to research whether or not if Job kicked it back in the day before he met Mrs. Job. I was trying to figure it out, but it didn't really tell me, so I'm not going to go there. But he said, I got to let them live their life, you know what I mean? Because they, they, they're young, and they need to experience some stuff. But he always wanted them to be sanctified and saved. So after their parties, he would call them all in. And they say he would pray for them. He said he did it continually. Look, look at that, that verse 5. And it was so when the days of their feasting were going about that Job sinned and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. My God. Job, Job, Job. And, he, you know, he, he was against them because they had fun. He just wanted to make sure that after they had fun, that they were still saved. You know, I don't really think you can lose your salvation if you really got it, but Job, this is what he did because he was, you know, he was a pious person. And everybody want to protect their kids. I wish I had a witness in here. You want the best for you. You want to protect your children. If you think praying over your children is going to cover them, then you're going to pray. I believe in praying over, over everything, the church, my children, my family, my marriage, my wife, my friends. I, they, I pray for my enemy because... Every now and then I need a footstool. But but it's just real. But now I'm going to look at Job's situation and his determination. Look at verse 6 and tell your neighbor, now there was a day. That happens to you and I. We're just walking along, going through life, doing the thing we need to do. Now there was this particular day. I wasn't even expecting it. I was going through my daily routine. I was doing my thing. They didn't bother nobody. Got up, prayed, ate right, exercised, kissed my wife bye. But now there was a day when the sons of God, the Bible says, the angels of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them. That's what's going on while you and I are getting ready for work, while you and I are getting dressed, Getting ready to go about our day and check it in, make sure the house and everything's cool, make sure we got something for lunch and dinner, make sure we got our tokens, we got our car keys and everything. While we're doing that in the natural realm, there's some stuff because we belong to God that's going in the spirit. I need to let somebody know today, it's not that you did something wrong as to why you always going through. Sometimes we're going to see, sometimes God might put your name in Satan's, you know, repertoire and say, have you considered? The folk in prayer, praise, and worship? Have you considered mother this and brother this and minister this and reverend this and sister? But God still got us. Because we, we're going to see what happens here. Not on the day the subject. And Satan came among them. He, I, I, that day, he came amongst them. Look at verse 7. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence cometh thou? Then Satan answered the Lord, and this capital L-O-R-D is Yahweh, the God who exists and allows to exist. Oh, God. And, and, and he answers it, 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 it says, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. Now, God knows that Satan don't have no job. He wasn't going to work. He going to mess with folk. But don't forget about the permissive will of God because, because Satan can't make God do anything. But God wants to illustrate to Satan that because I bless my children, 
they will not curse me to my face. I know what I put in them. I know what's in their hearts. I know how much they can bear. I know how much they love me. The question is, how much do you love God? So in case of a spiritual emergency, and look at verse 8. That's when God offered up Job. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? Suppose God put your name in there. Oh my God. Then he says that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and is true as evil. I used to think the same way. I used to think when I came back to church, if I'm going to church, if I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, I'm praying, I'm studying God's word, I ain't trying to mess with nobody, I ain't trying to hurt nobody, I ain't trying to rip nobody off. I thought, you know, not, I was cool with God. I, you know, you let that fall down to somebody else who's slipping. I ain't slipping and tripping. You take that somebody else. This shows me that's not necessarily the case. It's what God put in you and what God knows about you that makes you a candidate sometimes. Then Satan said to the Lord, I guess he does love you. Look what you know, got him Cadillac, you got him the big house. You got him a good job. You got the bank account. He got the bling bling. Look at Mrs. Joe. She all dressed up. She got furs. She got maids. She got servants. She got butlers. She got all that food in the house. She got all the refrigerators. She got all that furniture. She got all that stuff. She got all that jewelry. She got all them clothes. She got all them shoes. We have to be careful of what we call blessed. God said, make the distinction between being blessed and blessings. Because being blessed is one thing and blessings is something totally different. But Joe, Satan said to the Lord, I guess he would love you. Who would love you? I guess so. You don't put a hedge of protection around him. Can't nobody touch him. You done done the NC hammer on him. Can't touch this. I guess he would love you. Look, you know, he's protected his house. Everything that he has, you can't nobody get it. This, this is something better than ADT and Simply Safe and all of them, isn't it? You bless the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land? I guess he would. Nowhere in Job chapter 1 does it say that Job was aware of what the conversation was on another level. Nowhere did he get a clue. They didn't send him an email or notice. Satan, get ready. He's just going about what he does. So verse 11, God says, well, I'll tell you what, Satan. If you think that's why he loved me, I know different. But let me put it to you like this. Put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath. It was not being Satan said, Put forth your hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse you to thy face. And then the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he hath, possessions, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself, Lord Jesus. Put not forth thine hand. So Satan went from the presence of the Lord because Satan thought that if God just would allow him to take all that he blessed Job with, that Job would curse God to his face and God said, well, all that he has. Because God lets him know, you can't touch his life. That's what eternal life is about. That's what John 3.16 is about. Should not perish. That means you will not be destroyed. So Satan was satisfied. He went from the presence of the Lord. Job don't know nothing about this going on. Look at verse 13. See, the other verse I had you tell your neighbor, it said, now there was a day. Verse 13, and there was a day. Another one of them days, y'all. When his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house, and there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing, and the asses feeding beside them, and the Sabaeans fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they had slain the servants with the heirs of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Wow. This is supposed to be a regular day for Job. Look at verse 16. While he was yet speaking, anybody have a day like that? Everything that seemed like it's going wrong. 
and God is still God. Oh my God. Tell the truth. Did you put a praise song on? Mm. Look at verse 16. While, while, the, while the other one was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God has fallen from heaven and have burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. No point is Job getting an understanding of what is going on. But I tell you, when you love God, you got to love God in season, you got to love God out of season. So in case of a spiritual emergency, what are you going to do? By the time we get to the end of chapter 1, you're going to see how Brother Job just stepped up. See, when you don't have anything with God, you got everything. That's what Paul said, when I'm weak with you, then I'm strong. And it's hard to fathom that right now. It's hard to fathom if if God allows Satan to wipe out everything and you still got everything. Mm. Look at verse 17. While this one was yet speaking, there came also another. And said, the Chaldeans made out three bands and three groups of them. Three groups, they split up into three groups. And fell upon the camels and carried them away. And they slain the servants at the edge of the sword. And they let me escape to tell you this. That, that's something about evil. Evil said, let me let one of them live. To go back to tell Mr. Joe. And tell Mr. Joe's estate. That we are repossessing everything. Lord Jesus. Look at verse 18. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in the eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and it fell upon the young men and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Can you imagine how Job felt? What did I do? Call the pastor. Because this was supposed to be for somebody else. This is supposed to be for that person that left the church and we ain't seen them. I've been there. I paid my time. I sang on the choir. I hug people every Sunday. I, I said my prayers not only for me but for my wife and for my children. I never tried to cheat anybody. I never even cursed at anybody. I don't want to call the pastor. Something wrong. All my bills paid. Look at verse 20. Then Job arose and rent his mantle. Shaved his head because of sackcloth and ashes. That's mourning and repenting and seeking God. And fell down upon the ground and did what? Oh God. In case of a spiritual emergency. Take off all that stuff that reminds you of what you had. And begin to present yourself to God and he worshiped. That means that he bowed down and gave reverence to God. Because I come to let somebody know today, if God takes everything you have, you still got God. And you still should have some praise somewhere in your being. Because God has been good. God has not been good to me because of what I wear or what I drive or where I live or what's in the bank. God has been good to me because I wasn't fit to live, but I wasn't ready to die. I, God has been good to me because he saved my soul. Don't get it mixed up. Nothing wrong with having things as long as things don't have you. Let's put this thing in perspective. When you have a bad week, who's going to get you out of the bad week but God? When you have a rough time, who's going to get you out of the rough time but God? When you go into trials and tribulations, who's going to rescue you but God? And who keeps us in the midst of the storm? Who keeps us when your enemies rise up against? They stumble and fell. Though they, you know, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For thou, there is a very present help in the time of the Lord is my light in my time. Don't just quote scripture. You better believe it and apply it. Because there may come, there may come a day. When the stuff we depended on, the stuff we leaned on, the stuff we even boasted about, the stuff we looked at other people and said, they ain't got this, they ain't got that. And one day you don't have anything but God, but then you got everything because you have God. He 
saw, he worshipped. He, he had a worship service. I said, God, I pray I could be like Job. Job went and had worship. He called Sister Pam and them and said, look here. Look here. Look here. Look here. Look here. Look here. I, 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 need, I need to have praise and worship. I, no, don't come to the house. Come to the barn. I ain't got nothing in the house. They done took everything. Come, come to the barn. I'm just sitting out here with my head shaved. <laughs> I'm worship. Oh, let's see if you can't praise him other places. If you can only praise him on Sunday, you only open your Bible on Sunday, you only pray on Sunday, you're missing the whole picture. You're selling yourself short. You're living beneath the blessings of God. You're living beneath the protections of God. You're living beneath the mercy and the love and the grace of God in your life. It's a re- everyday, seven-day relationship. But Job, I tell you, Job said, Job went on to worship. He ain't checking with nobody. He just went and said, I tell you. And he, see, when you know you've done the best you could, just go ahead and worship. Somebody said, praise your way through. But you know what? Praise and worship is different. Because anybody can praise God. Because they get to open, but worship comes from another place. Oh, praise comes off our lips. And, and, and I can, we can put on praise, but you can't put on worship. Because they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Worship comes from a comes from a place where you know who God is and you know what God has done. And you know God don't owe you anything. And you know God been good in season. That's where wor- worship comes from relationship. Worship comes from experience. Worship comes from your ups and your downs. And he always said that. That's where worship comes from. Praise come from off your list, but worship come from another place. Deep. Call up on the deep. Anybody can sing a happy song. And I'm not saying they don't mean it. But when it's time to worship, worship come from somewhere else. There's something else that you know. Where it come from in the midnight hour. <laughs> when ain't nobody around there, but I can't get nobody on the phone. That's... That's why the song says, My worship. And, hey, I'm not down in praise. But that's why I said, Fill up your prayer, praise, and worship. Job worshipped. He didn't worship things. He worshipped God. You and I shouldn't worship things or people. We should worship God. So when the things are gone, I still got my worship. I still got my worship. I'm like you. There's some people in my life, and, 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 and they passed away, and I wonder what I was going to do without them. And God said, hey, I'll put them in your life. So you can reap something from them, so you can learn, so that when they're no longer there, you'll still be able to stand, and you can still be able to understand, I did this for you. So you can still worship me. See, you can worship somebody even though your heart is broken, because worship doesn't come from the heart. Worship comes from a deep, deep relationship. Oh, my God. See, worship comes, it, it vetoes. <laughs> my God. Worship vetoes what I'm going through. I'm not denying how I feel. I'm not denying what I'm going through. But I tell you, it's like fire. Because after you sit down and think about how good God been and what could have happened and what didn't happen, even my worst day, what could have happened and what didn't, he's worthy of all. And many of us have just been through some stuff, but he's still worthy. That's why you're here. You're not here because you ain't got nothing else to do on a Sunday morning. You're here because God's been good, and God has been merciful, and God has been gracious, and God has been faithful unto you. Even when I'm not faithful to Him, and even when He can't depend, He can't depend on me. I can depend on. It's a case of emergency. You need to know what to do. I'm just trying to suggest that maybe be like Job. Forget about the stuff and start worshiping Him, because you know God is a God of restoration. Anybody know that? 
But did you also know in order for something to be restored, it's got to be taken away? Oh, see, that's the other side of it. We have God's a restore, but for something to be restored, it's got to be missing or taken away. Somehow, it's missing. In verse 21, he said, guess what? Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I be turned thither. He's saying, when I was born, somebody had to slap something on me. I, come on, some. When you were born, how many of us dressed yourself? You went and grabbed your own pamper. Oh, that, that's what he's saying. Come on. That, that's exactly what he's saying. I came out with nothing. See, we can't get mixed up. God will let you get degrees and money and stuff. Don't get naked. And what he's saying is, I came into the world with nothing on, didn't own anything, but I had life. Oh, my God. What do we do with life? What do we do with our lives? He said, and naked shall I turn to it. Then he said, the Lord gives. That's the part we don't like. The Lord gives. And the Lord has taken away. He never said Satan takes away because he understood that Satan did not have the power. He understood that God gave him everything he had. He understood that Satan can't take away unless God permits the will. God, accept what God allows. He said, the Lord gives and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh my. He worshipped him. Lost his kids. Lost his cattle. Lost all that stuff. He got the nerve to shave his head and go have a worship service of a blessed be the name. Because Job understood. God is worthy. All that I had. See, when people stop by Job's house, man, Job, you bad. You the richest man of the East. You got all that. Job like, thank you, Jesus. Thank God. But he knew in a second it could be gone. Watch who you put your trust in. Watch what you lean on. Lean not to thy own understanding. And all thy ways acknowledge him. And he will direct. Oh, we need to watch who we trust in. Who we lean on. I tell you, you know, look, look, look. Look. You don't, don't be trusting them jobs. I know they're supposed to do what they do. But a lot of times nowadays, they fold up and they don't want to give you none. No severance. Or they won't give excuses. But no, I wish I had somebody. That if you... <laughs> God is trying to show us in case of a spiritual emergency what we need to do. Don't lose it. We are, we're, we're human, and it's going to hit us because we had all this. Don't worry about being human. Just don't stay there. If you can walk around crying all day, oh, God. Oh, it took my animals. And God be like, where you buy them? Who gave you the money to buy him? That's what he answered. You're right. He said, Joe, where were you? He told me, was that, was that Jonah? I ain't going to witness to them. They ain't no good. No, I said, the nerve of you. The nerve. So God said, put it in perspective. Because in case of a spiritual emergency, God said, don't, don't leave me out. I'm the one that told Satan he couldn't touch your life. You, you, Mrs. Job, Mrs. Job said, you still holding with your integrity. You still going up to that church. You still praising God. You still going to Bible study. You still talking about Adam and Adam. You still talking about diaconate meeting. You still talking about serving communion. What? Mrs. Job said, what? Fool, can you look around? So will, you, will you get that sackcloth ash off your glasses? Can you see? We ain't got nothing. No, with God, we got everything. We used to sing a song, I got Jesus, and that's enough. In case of a spiritual emergency. And look at verse 22. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Wow. I said, Lord, but he worshipped you. God said, yeah, he understood he ain't own that stuff. You don't own your ministry. 
You don't own your gifts. You don't own your calling. God gave that to you. And he got the nerve to empower you to use it. And you got the nerve to walk around with your neck stuck up in the air, giraffe style, like you got to go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Humility is the way up in God. I wish I had a witness in here. Low is how you go. Amen. In the Lord. I ain't talking about the world. I'm talking about spiritual things. I'm talking about you walk around. You didn't even see the new carpet we had. Can't nothing jump off till you get here. I w- <laughs> see, when you stay home and wash your car and don't come to church, when you stay home and clean your house and don't come to church, God said, get a perspective. Because God could wipe that stuff out and say, what you, what you got to wash now? Wash your body and put on some clothes and come worship me. <laughs> come on. This is where we get our destruction. This is where we get our information. This is how we're going to live. It's getting tight because the end times are coming. God wants us both of them praise him in season and out of season. And you know Job came back in chapter 2. Job, I mean, Satan came back and said, you know what, God... Joe crazy. Say so said, God, Joe crazy. Because I thought if I took everything from him, he would curse you to your face. Please let me mess with his skin. Please. Please. Let me boil him up. Oh, please. Please, God. Please, God. But he told him you can't mess with his life. And you know the rest of chapter 2? Oh, he boiled him up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he had stuff coming out of those things. He took some pottery and started scraping the pot. Never mind. But you know, he... And then when that God said, but look at this. That's all Job been through. He hasn't been through anything like Jesus Christ. Wow. After all he'd been through, nothing. It paled in comparison to what Jesus Christ been through. But see, when you and I come to the realization that God is good no matter what, that, see, that's, see, a little while ago, God put that in me. He said, don't look for the numbers. That's why I love, I told somebody last night, we was at a function, I said, let me tell you something. You can wait for 20, 30, or 200, 300 if you want to, but God told me, but two or three are gathered in his name, touching and agreeing. I understand if I'm just by myself, if I got the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, that's four, four. Oh! The scripture says two or three. I got an extra one. I'm, I'm a fool for Christ. I'm going to go on with it, y'all. I remember we went to a men's service. Before, uh, Brother Joel Ranchi, he was a new member. He was with me at this men's service. And it's supposed to be all these men there. It's about five men plus the brother. He said, Pastor, you surprised me. I said, what do you mean? You preached like it was 600 of us. I said, it was. <laughs> See, it is how God shows up. He's worthy of the prayer. You do your best because I'm trying to please God. I ain't trying to please men. I ain't trying to please women. I'm trying to please God. You wait on the numbers if you want to. But God is God no matter what's happening in my life. But you have to make that declaration for yourself. When you get sick and when you go on through, you get bad doctor's reports. I'm not saying you ought to jump around and run around the hospital, run around the doctor's office like, yeah, hallelujah, bless God, shave your head and all. I mean, but when you get to your prayer closet, when you get a chance to, to think about that thing and how good God has been and how the good he could have snuck you out years ago and you still... Who shall believe the report of the Lord? In case of a spiritual emergency, don't don't crack up. Everything you have, everything I have belongs to God. This church belongs to God. You and I belong to God. We're your pastors, but we are the people, the sheep of his pasture. So God holds us accountable for how we treat you 
and what we do to you and how we teach you and how we preach and how we talk about you and how we regard you. You can come to me with some crazy stuff and call me all kinds of names, but I'm not supposed to retaliate. Because it's the enemy in the me. It's something else in you that made you do. Oh, gosh. We're called to feed, to nourish, and shepherd God's people. And when you do it right, you get blessed back. When we nourish, we, when we feed, y'all feed us. Oh, okay. When you really think about it, what's really promised to us and sealed by the Holy Spirit is eternal life. Can't no no one can take that away from you. Not even Satan. He can mess with you. Everybody had folk mess with them before. You ever had somebody just keep on picking on you? They just keep on picking. They, they, they just don't. They just don't like you because you got a piece that passes of all understanding and the joy is unspeakable because you look nice in your clothes and they don't, and because you got something for lunch and they don't have nothing for lunch, and because you're not stretched out about paying your bills or they stretched out about paying their bills because they don't want to come to church. They don't want to be good stewards. They want you to go to church and pray for them, but they don't want to come inside the church and get what they need for themselves. See, they always want seconds. You go to the church and you chew up the message, they want seconds. They want to taste. They don't feel like coming out. They ain't got time to come out. They got to do this and they got to do that. And they want to bar this. They want to bar that. They ain't got this. They ain't got that. You got to get in God's will. Okay? See, when God comes to, to the neighborhood, see, the FedEx man don't go to everybody's house. He goes to the house that got the address on it, deliver this to this one. To this. I see the FedEx man skip houses. Because folks ain't put their order in. They haven't been in worship. They haven't been praising Him. They haven't been magnifying Him. They have not been glorifying Him. The FedEx man ain't got nothing for you because God don't know your address because you're not washed in the blood of the Lamb. In case of a spiritual emergency, who are you going to run to? Ghostbusters? The Black Panther? When you turn to Job, turn to Job chapter 42. Now, I do not want to suggest that this is the way it's going to end for everybody. But turn to Job 42 and 10. Understand all that Job went through. Turn to Job 42, verse 10. When you get home, read the whole book. Because God took Job to task. You heard nobody's three friends that came to help him. They, they had... Job, you done messed up somewhere. You, done, you, you, you did something, Job. You did something to Mrs. Job or something. You did something bad in the church, Job. Ain't no way God gonna let it happen to you. They, people do that when they know you, like, sanctified or you really love God. When something happens, they come to investigate what you did wrong. You go find out you were just being under consideration by God. Because Satan kept bugging God. Look at 42 and 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice. Twice. Remember what he had? Remember I talked about his, his wealth from God? It came from God, so God can restore what comes from him twice as much as he had before. Then came there unto him all his brethren, all his sisters, all they that had been of his acquaintance before. See, that's one thing. See, when you got money... You got lots of friends come around your door. But when all the money's, <laughs> everybody came back. They, my Bible say nobody came but the friends, the family that they, they worshiped with him. And they ate bread with him in his house and they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil the Lord had brought. See, just after he got restored, then they came by. Because they wanted somewhere to sit. There was no furniture. Everything got taken. No, I'm, I'm sorry. And that, that's me. Upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money, everyone an earring of gold. See, they, all to whom much hey, men were pouring to your book. Wow. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning, for he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and 1,000 yoke of oxen and 1,000 she asses. He had also seven. Did God restore him or what? Gave him double. But see, I don't want you to leave it today, and I don't want you to say, the pastor said, that's how God, I don't know how God's going to bless you. 
I don't know how he's going to restore what the canker worm took from you. But I do know one thing. That if God doesn't give me another material thing, that because of Jesus, after a while, by and by, everything is going to be all right. Because through Jesus, I have my eternal life. You gotta understand that thing. Sometimes you gotta get to the point where you understand that through Christ, I got it all. And on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. So in case of a spiritual emergency, what you gonna do? Some signs say break the glass, trip the alarm, break the glass, pull the fire extinguisher out. I said, no, this is what I need you to do. I need you to understand that sometimes the Christian life goes in a cycle. There's a celebration. That's Palm Sunday. Then there's degradation. That's Good Friday. But then there's elevation, Resurrection Sunday. Get ready. Because sometimes you're going to be celebrated. And then you might be degraded. But then you're going to be elevated. By who? By God. Because God got you. It's a cycle that we go through sometimes. Don't get stuck if with folks celebrating you. Because the same folks that celebrated Jesus five days later on Good Friday, then you know what? The celebration is, oh, I'm tired of him. Take him. Crucify him. Hang him. Whip him. Stretch him. Nail him. But when you know who God is, and you can go ahead and worship him during your roughest times, in about three days, all your accusers are going to see a new you. Uh-huh. In about three days. Uh-huh. Let them talk. Let them do what they need to do. I know it hurts when folk crucify you with words and talk about you and don't even know you. Made up stuff. Stuff they heard when they nail you to the cross. And then they got the nerve to take you down and put you in a tomb and put a stone up to the tomb like you never going to get up. I wish they knew the God that I serve. See, you can't get stuck in all that stuff. You're trying to stop. Somebody call the cops. Somebody call. God said, I got this. Because on the third day, when it's time for you to get up, God going to raise you up and can't nobody stop it. They tell me the soldiers fell back. They just, oh. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Get in touch with the one within and live your life. Don't let stuff knock you down out of the box permanently. We, we are flesh and we are spirit. Just don't hang in the flesh. Jump into your spirit and let God minister to you. And you minister back to God. Do like Job did. Naked. Naked. Ain't have a thing on. Oh, I wish I had somebody that understood. Naked came I into this world. And naked shall I turn to that. But I do have my eternal life. Because in a moment, in a twinkling. You ever been through something and that moment came? And you ain't doing nothing but waited on God. You didn't move. You couldn't move. You couldn't do anything. You felt your body heal. Everything started coming together. He shut the mouth of the gainsayers, and all of a sudden, sunshine. You know God even works in the rain? Even in the rain. He's working even in the rain. When the storms are raging in your life, be sure my soul is anchored in the Lord. Let us all stand.